Hey everybody, welcome into the channel. Welcome to another episode of Rob Squad and the Creators. Guys, we are always so excited to get these guests in. But before we get to the good stuff, let us introduce ourselves. You are here as always with your boy Jay. Hey y'all, you're also here with your girl Amber. And today we are back with another Inside the Reaction segment with our resident music expert, Mr. Tim Sommer. And today I think it's gonna be a cool ride like it always is. So help us introduce Mr. Tim back to the channel. Tim, welcome in. I feel like at this point, we've become best friends. Like, I, you I, know, I feel like that's how you've become that, best friends. That's what I'd like to say is I'm not just your expert, I'm your friend. Well, we know it's going to be an interesting episode from, uh, from you today. We hear that you have uh, something special for us. What would that be? Well, it's interesting. We're talking about people being friends. And today we're going to talk about Taylor Swift. Okay, the Swifties. Now, big name, yeah. Taylor Swift has a rare and extraordinary gift. She has the ability to set the deepest and most everyday thoughts and feelings of teenagers to music. Not just teenagers, but I think a lot of men and women. Most pop songs, and I want you to think about this for a second, most pop songs talk at you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or people talk about themselves. Generally, pop musicians tell you what they want, what they want. Think of all of the songs that have the phrase, I want in pop songs. Very, very few musicians make someone feel, I'm listening to you. Right. I get you. I am you. Taylor Swift has the ability to hold a mirror to the hearts and minds of her listeners. That's why I think Taylor Swift exists in a cynical free zone. Not only that, like say U2 or Bruce Springsteen, she has the ability to write songs that are very, very simple, memorable, yet somehow Very. feel original. And why do they feel original? They feel original because they speak to us. They are about us. She writes songs that make a person go, hey, that's exactly what I'm feeling. That's exactly what I'm thinking. That's exactly what I wish I could say. There's a time in our life when nothing matters more than the perfect yearbook quote. Do you remember that time? <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah. As senior year, getting ready to graduate. Oh yeah. I well, I would want. I don't want to go back. And I don't want to know mine what was. mine was. Yeah, sure. She's up there with some of the biggest of stars. You know, she's been doing it literally since we were in high school. Right. That's right. And and what's so cool now is that when we were in high school, it was definitely more on the countryside, but definitely so many hits that you heard. So. This is an artist that we, of course, when we were really getting into music, was popular. And now we have a 10-year-old daughter who is starting to become a, the ultimate Swifty and is also trying to introduce us to a little bit of the music as well. So it's just yeah. been this really- Isn't that amazing? It's Isn't like, that amazing? Yes, that's a think broad of amount how of time. Few, think of how few artists in your lifetime are cross-generational. Yeah. Right. When people compare Taylor Swift to artists like the Beatles, that's an accurate comparison. And another yeah. reason it's an accurate comparison is she is making people not just fans of Taylor Swift. She's making people fans of music. Your kids, other people's children, yes. maybe even yourself, you are caring about music because Taylor Swift makes you care yeah. about music. <laughs> she's making people interested in the artists she's interested in. And that's the same thing that the Beatles used to do. It's the same thing that David Bowie used to do. Yeah. It's the same thing that Bruce Springsteen used to do. It's the same thing that you too do. They're making music fans. They're not just making people fans of their music. She is creating a generation of music fans, and God bless her. For and I'm, I'm so glad you said that because uh, obviously when we were in high school, like when I think of Taylor Swift, obviously it was the uh, she wears short skirts, I wear t-shirts. Teardrops but, but, on my guitar. Exactly. But like what really put me on notice, and, and you just mentioned it talking about, you know, who they do features with, when she did uh, Bad Blood with Kendrick Lamar. And you got to live with the bad blood now. <laughs> Yeah, you guys know I'm, I'm a rap fan. So, so of course you when I heard it. Kendrick Lamar was featured with Taylor Swift, I was like, "Hold on a second! Like, what? What's going on here? That that it didn't seem right to me, but it came out so so cool." That's right. 
I mean, it's just absolutely fascinating. But well, we hear you have a, you have a song, and uh, we would love to check that out. Well, the first thing we're going to hear from Taylor Swift, we're going to hear the title song off of her latest album, The Tortured Poets Department. It's a song about something I think a lot of people in their 20s and 30s can identify with. It's a song about being a pretentious young person in a delicious way. In a huh. delicious way. See, I, I couldn't tell you a Taylor Swift song. I think it's kind of cool to get back to it. And, you know, as you mentioned, she is... You could mention her with the Beatles, and it's like, yeah, you look at her fan base. I mean, that's right. She sells out arenas, stadiums. So I mean, I, I definitely agree. And remember, not too long ago, we were talking about folk songs, and one of the things about folk songs is they sound instantly familiar. Taylor Swift songs, even a song like this, which sort of deals with sort of a literary idea, even a song like this, when you hear it, you think, I've heard that before. Even though you haven't, it instantly sounds familiar. She writes songs and a producer with her producer, Jack Antonoff, they produce songs that sound familiar right away. And that's a gift. There's a continuum of music. There's a continuum of music that matters to people. It's all the same across time. It's the song remains the same. Let's put it that way. Well, I'm definitely ready to check it out. Guys, make sure y'all like the video, hit subscribe, and turn on that post notification bell so you never miss a video. Taylor Swift, let's check it out. Never thought we'd be doing Taylor Swift on here. You left your typewriter at my apartment Straight from the tortured poet's department I think some things I never say Like who uses typewriters anyway <laughs> In self sabotage mode, throwing spikes down on the road. But I've seen this episode and still love the show. Who else decodes you? And who's gone? We declare Charlie Puth should be a bigger artist I scratch your head, you fall asleep Like a tattooed golden retriever But you awaken with dread Pounding nails in your head But I've read this one Where you come undone I chose this cyclone with you Coming from me, like again, not the biggest Taylor Swift fan. Haven't really, right. haven't really dove through her catalog. You know, her, most of the time, you know, growing up, her music wasn't for me. But like, just sitting here, sitting here, listening to this, just lyrically, lyrically, she is really, really good. And she mentions uh, Patty Smith. Is it singer Patty Smith? She's mentioning here? singer Patty okay. Smith. Yes, that, that's that's what I was wondering. But no, I I love the lyrics. I I love this the meaning of the song as well. Yeah, I feel like. Um... 
I I probably have a little bit more knowledge of Taylor Swift of than course, you. Like yeah. over time, obviously, like not like a deep deep dive into um, entire albums, but obviously the songs that were popular and came on, and you know, riding with your friends, listening. So of course, I know a little bit about Taylor. Hey, me now, and my friends used to ride ride around all in the truck with some Taylor Swift. <laughs> yeah, I can see that, but. No. Um, what I love about it is um, not really having too much of a knowledge on what she's made now um, and kind of knowing some of the music she's done in the past. There's just like kind of felt like you kind of grew up with her at the same time, because like you said, Teardrops on My Guitar, Cheerleader, Litter, that was a reference that at the time when I was listening to it, I was in high school. We were going to Friday Night Football That's right. games. And then, she's writing about her life, your life, yes. and then she was writing about her life in high school. Now she's writing about her life as a young adult. And you can hear this song very much as a conversation between two lovers. But it is a very real sort of feeling. It's a very real sort of song. You listen to it and you go, that person feels like they're telling the truth. Yeah. And what we've learned so much through the music of the past and what, I, what I've loved is some of the songs that you listen to and it's the relatability, right? But with um, right. Taylor Swift, it's kind of like, it's the this human experience that exactly. we're all living. And so we can all sit there and relate to it as well. And and this song, I feel like it's it's really cool listening to the lyrics and the music that's behind it, right? Because you man mentioned how beautiful the lyrics mm -hmm. were. And she's talking of this lover and it's not these monumental moments or these simple, but like really deep moments that she's reflecting back on, even though she says like, it's a cyclone. I think she described it like it's a tumultuous relationship, but she's rem reminiscing on those small little parts that she's right. always going to hold and on to. And then she was talking about him as well, knowing he wakes up, uh, you know, you know, she said he wakes up and the way that he's feeling, I think the metaphor she used, like, driving na nails in his head or something yeah. like that but no yeah it's it, it is a beautiful song and again i didn't know lyrically taylor swift was this good because I, I haven't haven't listened to a lot of her but i definitely i definitely want to start checking yeah. her out some more this this is a really really slow soft song but if you give me something slow and soft and that has really really good lyrics like like a bob dylan or a joan Baez, like lyrically that's kind of what what i'm thinking right here yeah for me it's like it doesn't necessarily feel soft, like maybe in the lyrics or maybe in like the, the sound, sound that's yeah, around her. But to me, it sounds like a little bit crazy, right? Like it kind of sounds like we're dancing around in our delusion because of the music that behind wow. her is so like bright and cheerful, Perfect. right? And she's describing Perfect. this ex and these are kind of, it's this tumultuous relationship, yet she's only remembering these small golden retriever, tattooed golden retriever moments. And she's remembering the things that they used to talk about. They talked about the singer, songwriter, poet, Patti Smith. We shut our eyes, we stretch out our arms and whirl on a pane of glass, an asphyxiation, a fix on anything, the line of life, the limb of tree, the hands of he, the promise that she is blessed among women. They talked about the poet Dylan Thomas, who has been dead. Dylan Thomas died in 1953, but yeah. still, Dylan Thomas is something that a lot of people in their 20s, they would read the poems of Dylan Thomas, who, believe it or not, is where Bob Dylan takes his name. Bob Dylan, who took his name from the poet Dylan Thomas. Wow. And now think of all the people who named their kids Dylan. It didn't really <laughs> start with Bob Dylan, it started with Dylan Thomas. But she remembers Dylan Thomas. She remembers Patti Smith. She remembers the Chelsea Hotel, which is a famous hotel on 23rd Street in New York City where many generations of poets and artists lived. Wow. Yeah. Such a deep dive into those lyrics. I'm ready to get yeah. jump right back into it. Sure. But you told Lucy you'd kill yourself if I ever leave And I had said that to Jack about you so I felt seen Everyone we know understands why it's meant to be Cause we're crazy So tell me, who else is gonna I've come to my heart exploding 
fancy hotel where two idiots who's gone Y'all are gonna have Amber going a Taylor Swift binge now, just because, just because. I mean, the beautiful, beautiful poetry and the meanings that she, that she put in the song. Well, I love it because um, it feels like you could see Taylor sitting there writing that song, right? I mean, when she said, oh, yeah. "Who's gonna hold you?" that felt like she was questioning herself. Like that's a question she was asking herself: "Who's gonna hold you?" now that I'm gone. And when she gives you these references, like um, you left your typewriter, you ate this much chocolate. These are things that like now when I go back and we listen to like Stevie Nicks, Fleetwood Mac, and you read in the comments, like this was the inspiration behind the song. That's this right. was the inspiration behind the lyric. Like that means so much and it's so cool now. And so I can imagine it, how these lyrics are going to translate in the future as well. Every lyric in that song, almost every single line is built to make someone go, yeah, I've been there. Yeah. I have been there. Mm -hmm. Man, what a gift. What a gift. Whether you like Taylor Swift or not, whether you like the hype around her or not, you have to admit, the ability to create a song where every single line makes someone go, yeah, yeah. man, I have been there. Yeah. Just I, the I ability to make it. people feel heard in, in your music, and she has it in every single line. And something we're going to talk about in, in the other episodes related to this song is the artist she mentions in this song. And you can imagine, man, if Taylor Swift mentions you in a song, oh, goodness. people then, then, then run, type, they use their thumbs really fast to go, okay, tell me more about Patti Smith. Tell me more about Charlie Puth. Tell me more about Dylan Thomas. And that's magic too. Now I want to go and research um, Dylan Thomas because yeah. the fact that she mentioned in the song and we got a little bit of information. For sure. But Mr. Tim, thank you so much yes, for hanging out with us today. Always, and bring, always, always, And bringing always. us some Taylor Swift. I never would have thought we'd be reacting to Taylor uh, Swift cool. on the channel that it was definitely a, a cool little switch up. So thank you so much. But absolutely my pleasure. Always. As we always send you guys out of here, we love you. We thank you. We appreciate you. And remember every day that y'all wake up, it is a blessing and that you are blessed. And for your new family members to hit that subscribe button down below, we welcome y'all to the RSR family. But you have a goal every day, just like we do. Let them know. All right, y'all. Together as a collective, we can spread so much light and so much love yeah. if we go out in this world, put our best foot forward. If we can make somebody smile, uh, a little bit of love goes a long way. We love y'all. Till next time, we'll see you guys later. Bye.